I would say to anyone who were to walk in to an English course or a social justice course or a philosophy of oppression course on a university campus now who has not been in the academy for a decade or so would be surprised by the cult-like mentality. It's really, because I once partook in that cult. I remember my first true experience with it being when I did a summer program with the ACLU. And I was used to being the social justice advocate at at my high school. And then I came to with you know, the, the wokest people, high schoolers from around the country all put into a dorm room together. And that's when I first had my reservations. Because I remember saying something to a girl that was something about being discontent with my effeminate nature and how that works for me romantically. And she wrote it off as, oh, life's so hard for you as a straight white male, isn't it? And there's something in our generation where we all want our pain to be seen as paramount. It's almost a, a pain competition. And this doesn't extend just to the elements of the left, because I think that's why I was so reactionary when I first had these encounters on campuses. To some extent, many of us have been raised in a victimhood culture. And if you recall, when Trump had that uh, rally in Georgia during the senatorial races, he told all of the crowd there that they were victims. So it's not an issue that extends just to the left, because although that's where it's most pronounced, but I also see people embracing identity issues so they can get a spot in this hierarchy of victimization. I see and I did it myself at one point. Uh, I, I identify as straight now, but in high school, I was bi curious, you could say, and did some sexual experimenting. And I remember really wanting to convince myself I had more of a proclivity towards men than I did in reality for this very dogma. So I could play some sort of oppression card. And this isn't to say that certain groups aren't dis disadvantaged but it's how for instance one of the ringleaders of coming for my throat um, their parents own several sweatshops and they have a liquor budget of two thousand dollars a month and they they happen to be slightly darker than me and all they do is speak to me about my privilege in this sense Perhaps I'm getting too anecdotal. Not don't want to name names, but it's a very it's a it's very weird how these identity things play out once you're really in that that cult mentality. Um, in that, even if you've been disadvantaged to, to some extent for your identity group, does am I more privileged than you? Because uh, it, fiscally, that's certainly not the case. Thank you for watching the Unity Now podcast. We'd love to hear from you. Please comment below and follow along at unitynowpodcast.com.